Hello, this is Commander Suverine from the cockpit of the Salty Weasel. You're listening to the Loose Screws podcast. You keep flying that frisky possum. Hey guys, it is June 18th and I have returned. I was out last week. I found him. I know, I know, you found me. And uh, it was under a rock beside a uh, tree on an island underneath a cave inside of a, <laughs> I don't know. Fuck. Anyway. Weren't you ducking is, drunk? I was so drunk. We'll talk about that in a sec. Anyway. Right. <laughs> um, anyway, this is Loose Screws. I am Ty Works. I'm Commander Tyrvel. And with me this evening is my whole crew. That took care of things while I was out last night, or last last night. While I was out last week, for because my gorgeous, wonderful girlfriend decided to run me down to the coast and show me a good time, and we had a blast and got sunburned, and I got drunk, and it was great. So uh, I I know she doesn't always listen to my show, but when she does, thanks, babe. I appreciate it. So. Um, anyway, I had, I had to do that. That's also why my fleet carrier is named Nicole right now. But anyway, (laughs) (laughs) anyway, with me this evening is our audio manager and Sherlock Holmes sleuth to find Ty, JN tracks. How's it going there, man? (laughs) Oh, not so bad. You know, uh, we're hanging in there. I think I'm, I'm back in the correct seat. (laughs) Also with us, with with us, also with us this evening is the brand new Hammer Time, Hammerer, Hammering, Cheese Maestro, who I believe he was out last week as well, Commander Chig. Hello. Yes, I was drinking too last week. Got together with some old family friends, and yeah, <laughs> one thing led to another, and I had to uh, message tracks and say, "I'm sorry, I'm not going to make it." Yeah, it was um it was uh interesting to say the least. Um we um yeah. Kind of a bad time with release of release of fleet lease release of fleet carriers, but it was good timing mentally. Yeah. Also with us is sure. our uh I don't wanna put this. We're just gonna say our admiral because he is the admiral. In L hate. How's it going there, bud? Oh, it's going pretty good. We uh we really tied it down for you last week. Yeah, thanks a lot for uh covering last week, man. Um I did not listen to the whole show. I started it and then got pulled away <laughs> and then I started again. I then I started I started, picked it up and got pulled away and got I have not had time. Um I, <laughs> as I, short I would, as it was. <laughs> yeah. Uh I was off from work last week. And, um, apparently when I went back to work, everything had happened while I was gone. Like all the things happened. So there was a lot of things that needed to be handled and I have no time again. It's wonderful. So that's what I get to deal with. So one quick thing, this is episode, if I can count correctly, official episode number 42. And as episode number 42, one of my favorite authors of all time, Douglas Adams, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and all the other books he's written. I know there's other books that are good, but really the only amazing book he wrote was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's got a special it's place in my heart. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. And as of the time we're recording this right now, it is 7.42 p.m. And the only time zone that matters, Texas. So. <laughs> 8.42. <laughs> so 42 is everywhere. So. So it's the Texas time zone is what you're going with? you damn right it's the Texas time right. zone. It's All not right. It's not central. There's nothing central about it. Texas is the southwest, baby. Southwest. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm good with that. Anyway. It always seemed kind of central to me, but. Yeah, it really is. It's, I think it's literally like the center of the freaking continent, but we'll go with it. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> so I went to the beach last week and. Um, that night, I started drinking um, Long Island iced tea, which is a weakness I have. 
Um, and funny <laughs> story, I don't even know what was in what what is, what is in a Long Island iced tea until like six weeks ago. <laughs> Because I decided tea. I was, I it's, know. It's like I everything, it was, isn't it? I thought it was like tea and like some tequila or something. <laughs> <laughs> no and tequila looked, either. <laughs> I went and looked it up and I was like, holy shit, there's a lot of alcohol in these. Yeah, so, they're made with uh, 100% hangover, I believe. Yeah, they, they, they were too. I, uh, I drunk a lot. I actually only drank three. Uh, truth be told, I only drank three, but apparently I'm an old, lightweight, old man now, and that is my limit is three LITs. So, um, walking back to the hotel, I was drunk, and everybody knew it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, back, go ahead. Ty did actually start messaging me in the middle of recording that episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we kept it together, but it was pretty funny. Yeah, it was, I messaged you, I said, I'm ducking drunk, and I'm doing this on my phone now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> been quite a while since I've been ducking drunk. Text, take works, good, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what that was. <laughs> like, on a scale, if drunk and somber, I'm about a drunk. <laughs> I think it had to be voice dictating, right? I don't remember, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I do remember. I remember, like, there. so we, we like, we walked on the beach back, right? Um, and there was this fucking seagull. And I, and I like birds. I like seagulls. But there was this one seagull. He was pissing me off and following me. Now, I was drunk, so there's a good chance that I, that seagull didn't do anything to me. He was 60 yards from me, for all I know. But from, in my mind... He was like right on my ass, just like pecking at me. But oh, I don't geez. think that's what really happened. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's what I've been up to. What have, what have y'all been up to? Oh, by the way, if you have a fleet carrier and you haven't done it yet, park that bitch on Midoran Hollow. It is a trip to watch, to, to be in orbit of Midoran Hollow and watch uh, New Africa orbit, which is not actually orbiting you, but it looks cool. Yeah, it looks I, uh, like it is, huh? I flew out to your fleet carrier and, and watched that and was chuckling the whole time because it looks like a joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. total trip. It don't even look real. Has anybody done the math to see this even, if that's even actually possible? Oh, no, I mean, it's get, super not possible. Okay. I didn't think it's so. like way inside the Roche limit. Okay. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, anyway. it would be ripped into a ring or just fall or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, but, you know, I wanted to, I mean, it has like a minute and a half orbit or something like that, and then you take the size of that, that's got like a speed of, what is that, yeah. like 24,000 miles a second or some shit like that, <laughs> or 24,000 miles a minute, something like that, so, anyway, that's what yep. I did. How'd your week go, Trax? Uh, just, just fine, man, just fine, we've, we, uh. Got a new puppy a couple of weeks ago. I probably mentioned that last week. Um, she's doing great and um, had had some game time. Spent a lot of it. Uh, well, I did some. I did some tritium trading. I'm going to be honest. I did that, <laughs> um, which was uh, opportunistic and just dandy. Uh, but I also rebuilt my chieftain. Uh, chieftain has been built for AX and was sitting out in the Pleiades, um, getting very occasional use. And I missed it, so I built another one. I've got a bubble chieftain once again, so I'm happy as hell. Just for reference, if you had a fleet carrier, you could put it all in one thing and be out there in one jump. I'm just saying. Yeah, well, um, if I, if I, <laughs> whatever. I think we're going to be talking <laughs> about mining a little bit later. And yeah, um, yeah we'll, we'll talk about that then, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Chig, how's it been? What you been up to, man? Oh, besides real life work kicking my ass, uh, in game was working on getting the last of the system permits I needed unlocked, unlocked. Um, I now have every single one unlocked. Last night was working on the last one and got just needed one more mission. And also, oh, there's a courier mission there. Oh, it's a system that's right nearby. Grabbed it, hopped to the next system, 
and all of a sudden it was almost seven hundred thousand light seconds to the to the Ooh. station I had to go to. It's like, Ooh. God damn it! So then Dubs goes, "Wait, I can jump my fleet carrier out there." <laughs> huh? So instead of super cruising all the way out there, I jumped two hundred light years to his fleet carrier. He jumped the two hundred light years out in in a ship so that he could have been in the system so he could plot a course to that system and then jumped back and and then <laughs> jumped to the planet I needed to be at and put me at like 0.5 light seconds from the station I had to be at. <laughs> That's wow. awesome. And probably yeah. took a lot less time. I, yeah, it, 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 we were trying to figure out it, if it actually saved a lot of time or just a little bit, but at least we were doing something instead of me just, you know, right. putting it in super cruise and going and doing something else. But that was that was funny. And then that mission uh, put me to where I got the notification in the box that I was now allied with the faction. It's like, yes. But then go to do the uh, permit unlock mission. It said I didn't meet the qualification. So I was just high hmm. enough that it rounded up for the mes message board. But you have to be actually above the amount in the thing. So I had to run another damn mission anyway and then, and then got my last permits. So I have all 26 of the permits that are available unlocked. So that was my week. I think I'm going to buy my fleet carrier here tonight. Cool. You got a name, you got a name picked out yet? Well, you know, it's got to be something cheese worthy, but I haven't decided a hundred percent yet. I think that's why I haven't pulled the trigger on buying it. I'm sitting in the station right now. Just, just thinking about what I'm going to do with it. So I, I'll let you know if I come up with something. Black Adder. Gouda. The Gouda. Oh, yeah. Black Adder. <laughs> I, there, I've seen Black Adders flying around already. Um, what about you, Hey, how's your, how's your week been going? We're catching up because, you know, I was out and I need to catch up. So <laughs> You're out and blackout drunk. Uh, because I care about audio fidelity, I'm not currently at my system right now. I'm in a different room, but my ship is currently super cruising towards my next star. I'm on my way out to the Crystal Shard sites for the second time in the last four days. Oh, wow. I assume you have super cruise assist on? Because you know. I'll, I'll need to make the jump once I get back to my system. Ah, gotcha. What have you been spending all your raw mats on? Uh, selenium and lower grade mats so that I can refill my G5s or G4s again. Uh, gotcha. So you won't be mat shamed by anybody in in the <laughs> Discord. <laughs> mat shamed. I, I have <laughs> bought several ships in the last few days, including the Corvette that I just unlocked. That'll do it to you. Well, it sounds like you guys have been getting along just fine. Well, I've been not getting along at all. <laughs> um, so what have you been doing, Ty? F besides that, I mean, you've been back, right? You've been back for a few yeah, days. Yeah, I, I've I've the main thing I've been doing is just fleet carrying, uh, which sounds like <laughs> I've, I'm every day I'm fleet carrying. I don't know. Uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's super fun. I'm really enjoying them. They did a great job with them. I think they're great. Um, yeah. I think that they did. Uh, I just really love, they really, really love them. Um, I, I didn't even think I would, I'm really surprised how much I like them more than I expected. Like they're super good. Um, they, um, they make me lazy. Uh, like, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Like I was sitting there, I was just like, "Man, that's like that's like 15 jumps from here to there." Nah, <laughs> no, it's one. <laughs> one it's jump. one jump. <laughs> well, I'm interested. It, it's it, it's an interesting reveal because I had the impression that it was going to be really expensive to be treating them that way. Yeah, and I think. I think that's not quite how it's turned out. So uh, after all the balancing shakedown that took place, so it's interesting. Yeah, the, and we're going to go far more into them in a little bit. But the big thing for me was how um, it's become like a toolbox that you move from system to system, and all my ships are on it. And it's like, all right, so which tool do I need to do this? It's like, what do I want to do now? I want to go mining, so I'm removing my. 
complete carrier to this system and go mining. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some uh, bounty hunting, move my fleet carrier to this system, and I'll, I'll take my my uh, either my fighter out or my uh, vet out. Uh, sidebar here, I've been getting a lot of time. I say a lot of time. I've been getting more time in the uh, Crate Mark II recently. I forgot how much I really love that ship. Oh yeah, it's a baller. I mean, well, don't get me wrong. Crates. I will never cheat on you, vet. I will never do it. But I do love my, my Mark II. I, I, I put um, hammers, uh, hammer rail guns on that thing. And I really like the choo choo choo. It feels like you're flying like a, it, it, hmm. like the way they shoot, it reminds me of like, uh, what was that movie? Last Starfighter. You know, it's like choo choo choo, choo choo choo. I was like, hmm. yes. <laughs> so I've been having a lot of fun with that. But it's, it nice. still has my three plasmas on there because. They just destroy. So, but I'm basically ripping off uh, Traxxas uh, build, so I can't take credit for it. So, anyway. <laughs> so you did that with with hammers, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're doing the like the meta build, yeah, yeah. Not not my current build. I changed my my crate build to a different what? thing for some for some kicks. Yeah, what? it's actually actually uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, it has. It has four long range rail guns and one long range fixed beam laser hmm. uh, with thermal vent on it. Uh, so basically, like the, the laser does, you know, respectable damage, of course, but it's really about bleed and heat off and then the, the rail guns. Uh, so everything is, is hit scan and um, you can hit anything from six kilometers away with no. Uh, damage fall off or anything, so it's it's uh, a lot of fun. I think it's a really good ship for that build because the the turn rate is just the perfect balance. You know, it's not like twitchy like an FDL or something. Um, so it, it at, at long range like that, it's actually pretty pretty okay to hit things, but you can still land shots close up. You know, it's not it's not crazy. So um, and oh, and I put um, shoot plasma slug on the rail guns. So it is an infinite ammo build. I have spent, I've been in a Hazrez with a crowd and they all had to reload like four times and I still have like a third of a tank of fuel left. I think the crate's a perfect ship for that. It has a big enough fuel tank. It's it's real great, really great. So yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of uh, not what you expect to do, I guess, because you have those size three hard points. You're like, why am I putting a size two gun in it? You feel like it's a waste, but you know, a rail gun is a, is a, a heavy lifter for a size two. So it, it does work out, especially you hit them all four of those at the same time. And wow. So <clears throat> let me ask you guys this. Um, if you're, if you're using the, um, what's it called? The plasma slug. Um, did you just put it on, on, on a couple of the rail guns or are you just full blown? No, all of them, all of them. It wouldn't make any sense to put it on just some because then I'd still have some limited still ammo, right? Ammo, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, and I've tried sense. plasma slug guns. I actually tried plasma slug on plasma accelerators on my Vulture, and even if I added an extra tank, it was, like, not worth it. <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, I, remember, <laughs> I remember you doing that. Um, yeah, and we talked about that too long ago, I think, and we were we were— yeah. Pretty much all agree that it was not the best idea. So, no. what have you it's been not- out doing with that ship, tracks? Oh, just uh, actually, I, I, the night I built it, there was some Hazrez stuff, or sorry, some um, conflict zones going on, and I, I came and joined in on that. So it okay. it held its own in a um, you know in a high intensity conflict zone. It was, you know, it, it is my my crate. It's 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 a multi purpose kind of configuration. You know, it's not like totally battled out, but it's pretty hardened. It has prismatic shields and, and, uh, cell banks and stuff. It, it's, um, you know, good, good armor and everything. It's not, it's not min maxed, but it's fine. And yeah, it was, it, it did great. It did great. I never came close to losing the shield or anything. It's, it's a good ship. And then, you you know, flying in the hazard is the same way. Sorry gonna go go uh, gang hunting with dubs or something one of these nights or what? oh i don't know if it would be okay if it would be good for that <laughs> okay. i would probably prefer the previous build if i was gonna go pvping um i actually i i like to take my cheap ships that i don't care to lose <laughs> pvping oh. and just try to be an annoyance because <laughs> i i i really don't 
win much in the PvP arena, at least not yet. So mm-hmm. which is fine. Right. Uh, for counter ganking, you don't have to kill them. You just have to make them go away. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Well, so actually, my my counter ganking ship has been reconfigured, and the next time Dubs' carrier is close, I'll probably drop it off on there because Dubs is always around when we want to do that. So I figure if it's just on his carrier, <laughs> it'll be available. Yeah. But it's my shieldless viper. But I moved the guns around, so now it has Cyto Scramblers, a uh, Grom Bomb, and a, a, a Super Penetrator Railgun. So it's it's mostly just the uh, tr- you know trying to take out the shields in the FSD ship, sort of the opposite gotcha. of making people go away. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I, I I just pulled because I was trying to figure out where Dubs is. Uh, carrier was and i pulled up inara which for those that don't know they have uh updated stuff and i realized that dubs is not in our uh squadron on inara so uh it's at bumper one that bumper mm-hmm. one okay he took my spot <laughs> you uh you were doing some other stuff i know i abandoned it <laughs> anyway um so um Grover Kiwi has an expedition going on, or has it hasn't started yet? Has it starts in like July? Is that right? Correct. Does yes. It, does anybody know the name of it? I can't. Re- cannot remember the name of it. I'll let Tracks try to pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> I did it. I pronounced it last week. Isn't that enough? <laughs> is it Noah? <laughs> no, is it's. I, I don't have the link in front of me. I, I failed. know that's what I'm looking I for failed. right now. Where's Discord? <laughs> uh, tab, tab, quickly. Okay, hold on. He put it in the events channel. This is good TV, everybody. Good TV. I know. I know. <laughs> um, it's anyway. It's it's about the um, Maori New Year celebration. Here we are. The Matariki Mini Expedition. Um, I can't see how many signups he has on here because it's not my form. But um, yeah, the Matariki Matariki Tiki Tour. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. But um, yeah, cluster of nine stars. It's the Pleiades for those who uh, know the system already or the area already. Um, and had to do with the planting cycle as part of the Maori calendar, who are the indigenous people to New Zealand, uh, where he is from. Uh, and actually, he had talked about doing it at um, at a time of day that that actually would be possible for people all around the world to kind of join in at the same time. I guess it was like it was like reasonable time for me over here, and then also people in the UK. I think it's like really really early in the morning for him or something, but um, that's pretty cool. So I don't know. Maybe we'll have some like group streaming going on or something like that. Yeah, it should be cool. I mean, for people, especially some people, if they are are new to exploring, it might be a good one because it is a shorter expedition. But right. you also could bump into Thargoids and stuff out there possibly, so who knows? Yeah, it looks That's like it's starting from uh, 13th of July through the 20th, so it looks like you got a month, uh, exactly a month out. Um so it's yeah the the length of this i mean realistically we could probably do it in one play session but yeah. if not everybody's going to be able to play on that day right but i think as far as like the special event version of it yeah see that's a monday 13th through the 20th oh that's the whole week uh, probably what we should probably do is see if we can uh uh get one of our fleet carriers to be in the bubble and then jump everybody out mm-hmm. there at the same time uh, I'd volunteer to do that, like on Sunday night, get to get everybody started on the twelfth. So, oh wow, well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, Grover, when you hear this, man, hit me up. We'll uh, work out the details, man. So, anyway, thought that was really cool of him. Definitely. Hate. Talk to me about. Uh, talk to me about our BGS. Where are we at? What's going on, man? Uh, we are very close to triggering triggering our first political war, uh, which will actually have blood in it. Uh, I believe it'll start tomorrow, uh, and we'll be actually fighting. We're going to actually have combat to support our end goals, uh, unlike the current war pew, we're in, pew. where we're attempting to subjugate and then intentionally uh, sandbag it. Uh, we also have 
a pending expansion, and I believe that we're going to land in the V740 Cassiopeia, which is above us in the galactic map, and an industrial market, which is one of the next goals, either an industrial or high-tech commodities market. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to have a tiny BGS class Sunday at 1.30 Central Time, uh, hosted here on the Discord for anybody that's listening or interested. Woo. All right. Um, so um, normally I would do Chig Chat now, but we're going to roll Chig Chat into our main discussion, Chig. So Yeah, perfect. Yep. All right. So. Tracks, do you have the story time with old man Ty sound? Oh, you know I do. Hit me. Gather round, children. Old man Ty has another story to share. We gotta figure out. We gotta figure out a timing on that because I can never, I can never hundred percent hear it. So it makes me think it's not done. So. Uh, <laughs> um, oh yeah, I think I I usually change my audio settings. Hold on, I can fix that. Sorry. <laughs> you move on. I forgot to set my thing to turn off voice detect. Uh, it's fine, man. Um, so we're gonna restart the scavenger hunt this week with. Little lore things where you go and you take pictures of yourself with at the lore things and go from there. So this one here is kind of a small story, but sometimes the best lore in video games is the small stories. And I'll give you a good example is The Witcher 3. If you have not played The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, what are you doing? Go play the game. It's wonderful. It's great. Come back to Elite, but go play that and enjoy it and then come back. We'll see you in a little bit. Or, you know, 80 hours or however long that game is. I mean, it was it's wonderful. But <laughs> um, that game has a wonderful, large, arcing storyline that is one of the best storylines ever made. And is my favorite single-player game of all time. It just beat out The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past after I played it um, back in 2015, so five years ago. Yeah, wow, that's been a while. Just realized that. Anyway, um The game is great. I love it. Um, But the thing about that really got me was how the little small side stories made up a large portion of the game, and it was wonderful. So with Elite, this is going to be just a little small side story of of, of a scavenger hunt. So the system is HR2551. Go there. You'll find it. Um, There are four uh, uh, data points to listen to. Uh, Go there and listen to them. It's a really cool little story. Kind of a small story, but it's a cool one. And then we'll uh, go over it next week and talk about the following one. All right. We're down to the meat, y'all. The news. So let's talk about the most important thing. Number one, um, we had a big patch on Tuesday. And the most important thing is that FDev screwed up my color on my on my pad seven. Oh it man. Now, and now the colors match. It's purple, and I miss my purple and green. Don't need to fix that. I miss my purple and green. I love that. Uh Dubs actually submitted a ticket about it, and I supported his ticket. But I think it ended up getting closed, so I haven't checked it recently. Oh, did it get closed already? That was fast. I think so. Oh, I haven't. I haven't. I, I I checked it earlier, and it was still open. But it seems like someone said they closed it. But I haven't haven't been able to get a chance to get online. I had to do show notes, come home, hurried up, blah blah blah. Anyway, here I am, and didn't check it. So shame on me for not checking it. I'm actually gonna go see if I can check it real quick. Because he sent me a direct link. Uh, I was just here. on the page. They're still in the confirmation process. Ah, okay, good. Ah. <laughs> good. Yeah, they need I, I, They need to fix that. Um, yeah, it's a shame they took it out. They That was a nice little Easter egg, so I, I hope that they put it back in. Yeah. Even if it just put in it as like an ARCS option, if you can pay to have it. Because <laughs> I, I think it's a neat little 
neat little thing that they it's added. It's a fun and then little took accident, it away. you know? Yeah. Put it in. Come on, FDEV. The best part is that there are people supporting it. There's like one, two, three. There's of like four there people are. here. Yeah, that are saying, yeah, we want this back. <laughs> Damn straight. Uh, I agree. I got, I got a feeling that they won't be getting it back, but yeah. Um, well, I should have done the ordering of this a little bit differently, but I did not. So um, let me talk about this real quick. So to begin with, uh, Will Flanagan is leaving Elite for the Frontier. Uh, apparently he is leaving Elite Dangerous and moving on to another game of Frontiers. Uh, do we know what game yet? Have they have they said? Or is it uh, one of the unannounced titles? I have not heard. Okay. Doesn't mean they haven't said. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's leaving out, and we got a new community manager. A new community manager is named Arthur Tolmy. So howdy and welcome, Captain Commander Arthur Tolmy. Got to figure out his cool name. Not that Arthur is not a cool name, but anyway. Um, yeah, but I have to holler. I, I got to do my work and get him um, in our Discord, but we'll go from there. So, had a patch Tuesday where they fixed a bunch of stuff. Some things are still broke. They made some new, they actually reintroduced some new bugs. Apparently, fleet carriers don't keep their paint even though you paid for it kind of deal. And um, anyway, so there's some bugs still. They fixed a bunch of things and I'm glossing over the things they fixed because the big thing I want to talk about is not really the thing we're going to talk about because everybody's talking about mining right now. And if you want to hear our mining chat, we'll come back to it. So what concerns me a little bit and again, I'm getting off of order here, guys. So you may have to, we may need to steer this back around, but. Just ramble on, brother. I know, I'm rambling again. No, dude, <clears throat> it's perfect. Okay, here's the deal. Every patch, Frontier messes with mining. It's like they're trying to find some way to get the right amount of income in. I think they're going about it wrong. Like in this patch, they, they, they lowered the amount you get from subsurface mining LTDs by about 25%. They increased the effectiveness of uh, peripheries of LTD hotspots, hot overlapping hotspots for LTDs. Uh, basically, they, they, they made them a little bit less effective. Okay, so what are you trying to accomplish here? You're trying to make it to where people have less income. You're trying to find the happy medium with your income. Let me tell you how hmm. you fix this, because they're going about it the wrong way, I think. They're trying to adjust one thing that will never be right. They will never get it right, because we will always, the community will always find a way to, not, I don't want to say exploit, but to mine the fastest way possible and exceed whatever they think is a good rate of income. The way you fix it, and something they have not addressed in this game, is the fact that the other professions don't pay as well. They don't even pay competitively as well. It's it's like a it's like comparing an NFL player to a a, a AAA baseball player. They I mean it, it's it's they don't pay as well. I'm a big believer that you don't necessarily get paid based upon the amount of work that you do. You get paid based around the amount of responsibility that you have. So my question is, what takes more responsibility, mining or combat? And like mm -hmm. bounty hunting, for example. Okay, so with mining, there is relatively no danger to your ship. There is uh, a lot that you have to manage in regards to uh, collection of things, but with the way that uh, you can stack uh, collection limpets on your ship. It's kind of mindless now. And once you go through there and you uh, ignore the stuff that you don't want, um, it becomes kind of mindless. I mean, I watch Netflix or Hulu while I'm mining now. I don't watch Netflix or Hulu while I'm in a, a combat zone. Or while right. I'm uh, bounty hunting. I don't do it because 
there is a bigger risk. There's more to manage. Now, realistically speaking, even that's not really all that dangerous, but there is a higher level of danger there. You, if you shoot the wrong person, you could bring the bring a bunch of people in. You could get cops in after you if you're at a high if you're at a high res or a medium res or a low res or something. So I feel like the responsibility is higher on combat, and yet it's not the one that's getting paid the most. Now I'm not necessarily saying that not necessarily saying that combat should be paid the most. But considering it's the least one, you would think, in my opinion, that if they were to kind of up combat a little bit and up exploration a little bit and make it a little bit more competitive, then maybe they would have to tweak the knobs every patch on mining and make it a little bit more easier for them to find the happy medium that they're looking for. I'm off my soapbox now. Someone else. (laughs) Uh, I have some insight into it. Go it. Combat directly affects the background simulation. And all these mining changes might not be inherently the mining changes that you're reading off the off the patch notes. They may be background simulation modifications. Because when you bring in 512 low temperature diamonds and you sell them at a station that's paying 2,900% of the galactic average, which your fleet carrier can't do at 1.7 million. It doesn't affect the background simulation at all. There's no influence or reputation gain that actually affects the background simulation using LTDs or void opals or painite. But with combat, both, uh, I need to find a gentle way to say this, removing system security or bounty hunting for profit very heavily affect the background simulation but they don't pay as good as that thing that doesn't affect the background simulation. Okay. All right. Mm. I, I'm just going to go. I, hmm. Just, I want to give a quick heads up. I've got the big thunder boomers going off. So if all of a sudden you lose me, it's because my power <laughs> went out. So just, just giving that warning. Okay. Um, <laughs> as far as balancing, you know, all the profession, they're, what it, yeah, it would be professions. You're a bounty hunter, or I mean, hell, what about the smuggling? You can't do anything to make money there. But I mean, mining, I think, has to pay a lot. Otherwise, hardly anybody would do it. The problem is, it does pay so much that right. everybody has to do it to make money right now. And, you know, I, I was going to bring up, you know, in Chig Chat uh, tonight, and that's why we rolled it into this because it's in the same vein as, you know, on the forums. A lot of people were, you know, getting salty about the fact that, you know, somebody had posted a video on YouTube where they made 500 uh, million credits an hour, you know, in one hour. So you can make a billion every two hours is is insane. It wasn't if that was sustainable that much. It, you know, it wasn't really sustainable anyway, if you really watched it. But, you know, this guy was talking about how. That, you know, this is ridiculous. You know, how much is too much, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, people got into it, the discussion, and there's always been, you know, a gold rush of some kind in this game. It's been mining for, you know, over a year now, you know, since, you know, what, late 2018, you know, is when mm-hmm. when mining became, you know, the bread and butter to, to make it. And that, that, that time, you know, it was core mining. And that makes sense because that one takes the most effort. When all of a sudden it became surface mining, which was only marginally better than core mining really for a right. while. Uh, but then they tweaked prices all the hell. And then it became a, surface mining was the only way to do it. Then they had subsurface, you know, when they launched carriers. Then they rolled that back just a little bit. And uh, I, I just don't know you know, what the answer is. I mean, should you have multiple gold rushes going on? So if somebody needs a bunch of credits, they have multiple ways to do it. So you don't have everybody in the same place. I I don't know. The one thing from the patch notes that I found interesting with the subsurface um, mining nerf, you know, they they tweaked it down with 25% less uh, chunks fly out from a subsurface deposit or whatever. But they talked about the overlapping principle and how, you know, the center of a hot spot you get 
you know, reading the notes, it seemed like they were saying you get significantly more from mining at the dead center right. of a hot spot. And I had always, you know, you know, heard you want to avoid the center because that's where most people drop in, you know, and stuff. Has anybody seen anybody who's gone and tested the center of a hot spot compared to, you know, halfway out to closer to the edge, how much of a drop off well, it is? I, I've seen some of uh, down to earth's data and it's it's sort of like the the vast ma- at least before the vast majority of it was like a hundred percent, and then it would kind of go to like fifty percent, twenty five percent, where the color changes were. I mean, you can see like the the yeah. most of the middle of the thing was really bright, um, but the whole thing about like people drop in, like there are different respawn rates for different kinds of deposits, like surface deposits and things like that. Like none of that turns out to really matter. Uh, well, that the subsurface, the there isn't even a respawn you wait for, I guess. You can log off like an HGE to get that same asteroid back, I've heard. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. but you're going to get pirates if you do that. Yeah, well, that's when you have uh, NL8 there to protect you. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be one way to do it. But, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I mean, should we have, you know, a few different gold rushes and then everything else kind of balanced out credit wise, or is this just the way it is and the way we should just accept it? So, okay. I compare this to real world stuff and real world has gold rushes, not literally in golds though. Like uh, you'll have um, like, a Christmas time toy that's going to sell ridiculously good. So uh, people go buy them and then resell them kind of thing. Or, um, you know, there's um, rewind the clock back to frontier days. There were literal gold rushes. That's why Alaska got populated in California and places like that. Um, I mean, hell that's why people came to America because there's gold in them narrow hills and also, you know, we will, you know, destroy a completely indigenous species. But anyway, our di- indigenous race of people, not species. But anyway, um, you know, uh, there's 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 things there that there's something to be said about the gold rush in the game. I like the idea of what's the, what's the hot this week? You know, well, this station is having a run on them. And we kind of had this back when we had community events. There was already kind of an embedded um, gold rush going on with like community goals and uh, sure. uh, intercell initiative types of. There was kind of gold rush there. The, the, those gold rushes felt natural and felt built into the game, whereas these feel kind of artificial. And Chig, you're right. There's always been, excuse me, some quick path to get money in this game. You know, it used to be the rare trading back in the day, and then it was. Uh, was it Robigo next with the mm-hmm. the Robigo slave slave trading, and then it was um, uh, surface missions with uh, skimmers and gosh, it, it, it seems like every six six or eight months there was some sort of new hotness to go earn money, and people are always going to find some way to earn money in this game. There's always some way to earn money in every game. That's just how it is, but. When you have something that is so blatantly the way to do it, you make other parts of the game look less attractive. And I think that if they were to to kind of focus on making those parts a little more attractive, then they would have to worry less about making the one way be balanced or whatever they're aiming for. Hmm. And see, I don't see, especially in Elite Dangerous right now, you know, credits aren't really competitive advantage in anything. You know, that's engineering. You know, you, you still have to think all your time into that. So having easy ways to get credits, to me, reminds me of, you know, back in the day, like playing Gradius and up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. That's what these feel like. They, they're they not really an exploit because it's in the game. It's within the mechanics. It's known and you can do it. And if you want the extra credits, you can go do the cheat code that is mining right now to get the credits and buy your fleet carrier or buy the cutter or whatever you're after. So I don't have a problem with it 
at, at all, really. You know, if there's any one thing that's going to be a lot of money, because you don't have to do it. And if somebody else has credits, it really doesn't affect you at all. I mean, does, does somebody else having, you know, 20 billion credits affect your gameplay even a little bit? Well, okay. So we, we're going to put this in perspective here for just a minute, okay? It, it, it doesn't affect us really right now, but we got to think about where we're headed. So right now, with the way that they have things, there is a minor way that you can trade uh, credits in the game. Uh, I, I gave uh, several million credits to Data for uh, loading my ship up the other day uh, with uh, Tritium. I don't know how much I gave him. I mean, several million. Um, uh, he was running Tritium for me, and he... He he taught he got me out and there you go so, um, the reason I say that is because we're headed for, and we don't know this for sure of course, but we're headed for a player trading economy is what we're headed for, and if they don't have a way to, uh, I don't want to say control but to kind of, uh, streamline. That's probably not the right, right word either, but basically kind of uh, check valve the amount of money that people are earning, then you're inherently lowering the value of the credit. So therefore, the value of certain things get lowered. So therefore, the game becomes, I don't want to say pay to win, but it becomes one of these things where um, there's no value to putting the hours in to earn the things. So... I think that they have to get a handle on it, but I think they're going about it the wrong way. I, 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 I say it again. I think if they were to spread the wealth a little bit around to the other professions and make them more lucrative, I think that they would, I, I think that people wouldn't, wouldn't focus so much on mining. They wouldn't have to tweak the knobs every patch on mining to get it to what they I'm not even sure what even they're even what their goal is. What I mean, well, I mean, the theory that you were going with is if they're going towards player economy, you know, I'm just coming up yeah. with this now, just off the cuff. Is is if that your theory? You're you're looking forward, and they're going to the player economy, which the new tritium trading kind of shows that it it might be a test bed for that. And the best way to kind of judge. Uh, you know, people's credit levels and stuff is that there is that one way that people are gaining credits and see what kind of credits people can amass. So you get an idea of, of where that will go makes it, you know, only turning one knob to adjust, you know, to see how that works rather than having to adjust knobs on a bunch of things. Yeah. You know, that might be what they're doing. It's, it's hard to know because we get so little information and it's hard to, you know, ask for any information. And, and I mean, hell, we get uh, one seventy second, seven one seventy seven second trailer for an expansion that's coming out a year from now. And, you know, there were how many YouTube videos and so many things. And that thing was broken down so in depth. You know, uh, I mentioned it on the Super Friendos. It was like the Zapruder film, man. They were looking for the shooter on the grassy knoll in that little 77 second video. And I I just don't know. And to guess where they're going with it down the line, I, I, I can't begin to speculate. I'm hoping that they're going player market with it. I hope that we can eventually build engineered ships and sell them on our fleet carriers. I think I would love to see that. And you will see, you know, that won't pull credits from the game like fleet carriers did because that'll just be credits moving around from one player to another. You're going to need other, you know, credit sinks if that's the case. But I I just, you know, long-time players are going to have a ton of credits no matter what they do. I mean, if they right now also decided to nerf mining where you could make, you know, 75 million an hour only or 50 million an hour, you know, really started knocking it down, then all that that hurts is new players. You know, your your long established players, most of them have, you know, billions and billions. And even those that don't already have at least a few billion. And you, you would just, you know, hurt those that haven't already taken advantage of this. 
tracks hate y'all been kind of quiet. Y'all been kind of quiet. <laughs> well, um, I think you're all wrong. I think you're all <laughs> all wrong. Um, when and did that, my wife get on this call? <laughs> I'm I'm kind of joking, but I'm kind of not because I th- I think actually like the the premise of this might be faulty. Um, the idea that for one thing that all the professions should be made the same, I mean that that gets tossed around a little bit. I I don't think there's any justification for that. Um, in in it, it you're, you're talking about like you're comparing it to real life. Um, there's something to be said for that. Like it's a, it's in many aspects a simulation game, but by the same account, it's still a game. And mining, for the most part, especially the laser mining that has been the king lately, is the most dull, boring work ever. Mm-hmm. Right? No, because here's the the flip side of what you're saying. Like everybody has to mine. Well, no, nobody has to mine. I haven't mined at all in months. I'm actually mining right now for the first time in many moons, but you don't have to mine. You can actually play the game however you want and you'll be fine. You have to mine if you want to make credits at a rate of like 200 million per hour. That, that's, that's it. That's an if and it's on you. Um, nobody has to mine. And, and, and likewise, if you were to flip that around, um, if mining did not pay significantly more than combat, if it paid 10% more than combat or 20% more than combat, do you think we would be mining? Because I don't think we would. I think if all the professions paid the same, everybody would just do like one or two professions and all this stuff would be worthless. So I think there's, there is game balance in the way it's set up that mining is way more lucrative credit wise. Uh, whereas combat or you know, that, that's sort of one of my most fun things in this game is way more lucrative fun-wise. And a lot of people will have other different things that they love to do. Some people love trading, you know, even if it doesn't mm-hmm. make as much. I mean, you can make more trading than you can at combat. It's also, in my opinion, it, it, and I think most people would agree, it tends to be a little duller and more mindless. But if you're really good at it, you can make a lot of money. And if you're careful, uh, I, so I think there is actually a significant game balance going on there that that is established. I don't think that they're necessarily working on something. I think the reason there was a change is because the subsurface thing was kind of crazy. Um, for me, like I just took displacement missiles out because I wanted to try this out right now. Um, and I'm having absolutely no luck, by the way. I'm in a hot spot and there's nothing. <laughs> there's not a single subsurface thing I've found the entire time we've been on the podcast. I've been in the ring. Um, are so, you are you using a pulse wave analyzer? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing the thing. I'm finding lots of liquid oxygen and shit, but, you know, anyway. You're doing the thing. <laughs> I'm doing the thing. Like, I didn't I didn't just fly out here and assume that, that uh, low temperature diamonds would fall into my cargo scoop. Um, I brought the equipment and everything, but Anyway, that's not really the point. Um, the 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 thing is, um, for me, lore wise, the the core mining and the subsurface mining makes a lot more sense, and I think it makes a lot more sense from like a simulator perspective. Like w- coming up to a rock, shooting a laser at it, and then having you know thirty to forty five seconds of stuff fall out, and then it says depleted, and the rock hasn't changed shape or size at all. Um, that doesn't make any sense to me. I kind of hate that. Uh, and I, so I think it's sort of like a, a weird mistake that that goes on. I, I much prefer the subsurface mining where, you know, visually and like story-wise, you know, it's drilling in and then blowing chunks out. Or if there's a core, like blowing things way out of the whole thing and destroying the whole rock, that's awesome. And it's vaguely realistic, you know, like obviously these rocks aren't purely made out of the substance we want. And if they were, we could just laser into the side of them until they were gone, right? You just stay at one rock until it was gone. So, I mean, that's not really very good gameplay. So they make it so it depletes. That's kind of a game thing. It's not really realistic. So I I, I much prefer the subsurface and the core. I would love to see more game balancing where that would make more sense. You know, maybe the laser 
well, I don't know. I don't know what to say about the laser stuff because it, I don't, I don't think it makes sense in a, in a like realism way. Um, but if you blow up a whole asteroid and then there's this many chunks in the thing, like that's a pretty good standard for how much should be in a rock and how much work it should take to get that. Um, I thought that was great. I mean, when void opals were the king, I thought it was, it was fun. It was, it required thought and you actually had to learn the mini game and likewise now with the subsurface. Um, but I, I don't, I don't at all think that something like fighting in a Hazrez should pay just as much because I would never come back out here. It would, it would be silly for me to come out here. I would just get my combat ships and, you know, I can, I can do, I can have a lot of fun playing a video game and, and there's, there's credits that appear in my account when I'm done with it. You know, that, that's the value of, of combat and that's why it doesn't need to pay as much in credits. I feel like I've repeated myself a couple of times. That's okay. I repeat myself a thousand <laughs> times, but you, know, you actually bring you bring up a very good point. I hadn't considered is that, you know, you know there, there's there's something like if 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 there was one way to earn credits, in in in, in here's the thing. I, I don't want to get like completely stuck into the mindset of like people say. Well, you don't have to earn credits to, to enjoy the game. You kind of do with this game because if you don't have an income of credits, eventually. You're gonna run out because credits are your lives. Like when you're but out everything credit, you, you do in the game earns you some credits. Yeah, yeah. I, I like I said, I haven't been mining in forever. I mean, the only really lucrative thing I did was a couple of hours of tritium trading. That was right. way more money per hour than I usually make. It wasn't mining levels of money, um, but it was it was maybe two thirds of that. But for the rest of the time, I'm doing missions and I'm being paid pretty well for them, and I'm fighting in a Hazrez and being paid pretty well for it. And but, other things, other forms of combat, maybe don't pay as well than straight up bounty hunting. But there's other reasons you're doing it, like the BGS stuff. So, right. I mean, ultimately, you're having fun with the game, though, right? Yeah. So okay. So it's desi- that's desirable activity for me. So I don't mind that it pays less. And when I hear the cry for like, how come combat doesn't pay out? It's it feels very greedy. Like obviously the person who wants combat to pay more is having a lot of fun with combat. That's the thing they wish they could do. Only do combat in this game. Well, you can just Why just only CQC do that. You'll more, get paid. <laughs> well, sure there. I honestly, I think that it is, it, they don't have to be balanced, like you said, because then who would go mining at that point, you know? Um, and it, it is a sandbox, so you should be able to choose what you want to do and go do it. I, I just think, you know, some things like, you know, Thargoid hunting, that combat should pay more, you know, especially even some of the weaker ones, because newer players have such a hard mm. time killing it you, you know you're you're not making money killing thargoids until you get really really good at it so i you know i, I you know there, there needs to be some balancing obviously but i have no problem with mining being the most lucrative the question is is it too lucrative hmm well i don't know there's a giant credit sink in the game now you know i i'm ages yeah, and ages from having enough money to buy a fleet carrier and i've been yeah, playing this I game mean, like crazy on day one, they were like, uh, you know, just through Anara numbers, there were already like 5,400 of these things bought or something. So obviously, the, a lot of people have a lot of credits. A lot of people have been playing a lot longer than me, and many of them really wanted to build up credits, and they, they mined a lot more than me. You know, it, it is a choice to have credits. You can yep. get them quickly. A lot of people who haven't played the game as long as, long as me definitely have a lot more money than me. I kind of just only want money to be able to buy the next fun toy in the game. And, you know, maybe I, I think the fleet carriers are really, really cool. Um, but I'm not like, I'm not going to, I mean, how many hours a week do I get to play this game? You know, I have a real life and stuff. So I, I'm just not going to spend all of that time for months and months and months mining instead of doing what I want to do, which is other activities in this game. You know, I'm, I'm, I'll do it a little bit for fun here and there or to, like you know, maybe I want to type ten, and I'm like, well, that'll that'll drain my bank account by half. Why don't I pre-build that a little bit? 
you know, that's why I would go mining. Yeah. Um, so I think that, I think you guys make some good points here is that um, things I hadn't considered really in that, um, you know, not everything necessarily needs to be the most uh, lucrative way to earn money. I think that you do have to earn some money in this game um, because of, you know, the way the game's set up, there is, you know, that is your, your, your HP or your one ups or what do you want to call them? You know, you die, you get, yeah. But, you know, on you know the day one, there's you said there's fifty four hundred fleet carriers, Chig. Yeah, something like that. Hey, there's more now. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's believe it. It's so that's going to drop significantly over the next six months. That will drop. I, I bet you that number will be halved or even thirded. And the reason why I say that is because, um, so right now people are back in this game and wanting to play it. People come to this game and drop it often. And right now, fleet carriers are hotness, and they're not looking at the fact that we don't really have an update for the next six to nine to 12 months, at least not a major update. And during that time period, people will go play other things. They will. Um, I mean, you know, it won't be Cyberpunk because they pushed that back again, but uh, it might be Baldur's Gate 3, which apparently is going to enter early alpha in in August. And I watched the video for that today, and I literally drooled all over myself during lunch. It was glorious. But, (laughs) um, (laughs) I mean, there's there's other games that, that people will go play for a while. And then during that time, either the fleet carriers will decommission themselves or they will decom them before they leave. Oh, yeah, there's definitely something to be said for that. I mean, right now, Elite Dangerous has broken its record, you know, concurrent players multiple days mm-hmm. in a row and stuff. I mean, it, it the, the game is more popular than it's ever been. And, right. you know, fleet carriers, you know, a lot of that is up, you know, longtime players came back to see what the hubbub was about and stuff like that. I'm just surprised that if it's players that hadn't played in quite a while, that they had those kind of credits, you know, to, to spend. So, I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. They could be around, you know, I, I was still debating whether I was going to buy one or not. Now I've decided to, now that I've seen them in use and seen what people are doing with them. And I, right. they, they, they are, they are a cool asset to be added to the game. I'm looking forward to when, you know, I don't jump into a system and there's, 45 of them sitting in one system. That's just <laughs> asinine. But, you know, as they get spread yeah. out and, and, and we play more, and I, I think that this just shows, you know, uh, the game. Uh, I mean, on our Discord, doesn't it just amaze you guys how many new players join at times? It's like, oh, I started out this game a couple weeks ago. It's like, Jesus Christ, somebody right. brand new to a game that's, you know, six years old. It, it I, I'm always amazed by that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to say that, you know, fleet carriers, you know, we definitely have a surge right now, but we could get more players coming in and it could, you know, you could see more people buying them that decided not to. And, and then they see the value in them. You know, Trax could get the bug. He just said he was mining for the first time in, in forever. <laughs> and, you know, uh, he might be thinking he wants to get that damn fleet carrier sooner rather than later, you know, and there's more players like that. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fleet carriers are... Uh, way cooler than they appeared to be before release. Like there was betas and stuff. I flew around them. I experienced them. Um, honestly, like the livery stuff and then actually like having them go live in the game and seeing people use them and participating and stuff like that, um, it really did update me a lot. Because <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, yeah. was, I was like kind of, you know, I was like, okay, well, people are going to do that. That's fine. And I was kind of happy to ignore it. Um, I'm not going to go mine 5 billion credits right now, but like, that's a, it went from a, I don't care to I'll definitely pick one of those up someday kind of thing. Cause it's, it's really cool. I'm, I'm way too far. I have like 1 billion, I have like 1.3 billion. So I'm just, I'm just not going to go for it right now, but it is really, really cool. The fleet carrier stuff. Do you think that they've they have changed the way people play the game? Oh, forever. Yeah, and I think it's going to continue to evolve a, a lot. Yeah. I th- I think you know we're just 
really scratching the surface of it. I mean, like Awan was flying people out to Anaconda Graveyard tonight, wasn't he? He, he mm -hmm. threw a bunch of people mm -hmm. on there and just, you know, hey, who wants to come with? Oh, Ben, me, me, take me, and then go out. You know, uh, you have, uh, you know, as, you know, the, what is it, the DSSA or whatever, get their carriers all over the galaxy and in place. You know, ex exploration has forever changed now because you have waypoints that are new stations all over the galaxy you have just the stupid thing me and dubs did last night just to avoid super cruising for <laughs> you know 40 minutes i you know did three jumps he did six jumps and then we we jumped a carrier out there you know it's it's who knows what else people are going to come up with and that you know kind of what the dev said is they were looking forward to see what the players would do with these and we're now seeing well they were right there. We're all seeing what people are doing with them. And, and uh, it's just another evolution of the game. Yeah. I, I, I know for me, they definitely have made me lazier. Um, <laughs> I didn't think that was possible. <laughs> and me either. Cause, cause I, I have, uh, I have gotten to the point where whenever I was uh, looking around, I was like, Oh, I got to go over here to do this or go over here to sell this or mine this or, I want to go back over here. Oh, damn. It's like 13 jumps away. Oh, it's like nine jumps away. No, it's not. It's one jump away. And I will, I will, yeah, sit that's my, not a bad thing. I will plot the jump, sit on the fleet carrier and go watch TV or, <laughs> or go do the dishes or something. <laughs> Just go hang out with a girl for a little bit and like, all right, well, it's been 16 minutes. Be back later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and, there's uh, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's um, it's really changed like the way I do things in the game, and I'm not sure. Like the other day, I was and I'm I'm I was playing uh, uh, Modern Warfare with my uh, squad, and uh, we were in the middle. Wait, of Wait, I thought I like, was your squad. You are my squad, baby. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, y'all are my crew. Okay, there's a difference. Uh, y'all are my crew. You never call uh, me baby. Shut up, bitch. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you like you like it, bitch. Shut up. Oh uh, <laughs> man. Oh man, I'm offending so many people. I just know it. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> anyway, um, man, I I I had I had Elite Dangerous on the other screen, and I was like. In the middle, in the middle of a match, I was like, "Alt tab, plot jump, alt tab." All right, here we go. <laughs> and I, I was just trying to go out two thousand light years because I wanted to go to my favorite system. So, take screenshots there, and that's what I did. About halfway out there, I can't remember who it was. Someone said, "Oh my god, that's where all my mining ships are." <laughs> I wouldn't have just said that. Was it you? It was totally me. Oh shit! I can't <laughs> so shit. anyway, they're. they're they're back in the bubble now. So anyway, but yeah, I thought that was kind of funny. Um, hmm. I mean, it, so, so w w they, they have really changed the way that I play the game. And I'm, I know that like with hate, like dubs was doing like some pseudo cross play the other day where he was like, all right, so everybody's on the fleet carrier. So we're going to jump it over here kind of thing. Yep. And it's just so cool that that has really brought a level of, of being able to interact with the console jockeys that we've never had before. And it's so cool to have that and be able to do stuff like that. And I really can't wait for the next iteration of them. I know, I know we just got them a week ago, but I can't wait to see what else they come up to do with them. Like, you know, I would totally try out the secure warehouse for a, uh, an engineer that could do all of my, um, uh, uh, experimentals, uh, and you know, even if it charged me credits to do the experimentals, I'd totally do that. I don't know. Jan Trax said that that would be game breaking. <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> so that um, shall not be mentioned again. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I'm with you. Well, I mean, right now, just one nice step I would like is if you could like stand on the bridge and watch the damn thing jump and watch the ships fly right. around, yeah. you know, just right. little things like that, which, you know, I don't know how much effort that takes to get into the game, but that's, that's my hope is that that comes very soon. So, and maybe I don't know this. So 
I watched a fleet carrier jump and you know, you go through the little dark cloud or whatever. It, that looks different from our jump tunnels. Do, is, does anybody know the lore why that is? I haven't looked it up. The kind capital, like the capital ships. ships. Yeah, yeah, just where they just kind of rip a hole in space and slowly go through it compared to us jumping into witch space. Well, it looks yeah. like the Thargoids jump drives. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah, I, I need to I need to do some lore research on that to understand it. I, I knew I knew that there was a different process there, but I didn't quite understand it. So, so what do you think is the worst thing about fleet carriers? The O seven now matches the pad color. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. man, <laughs> I think. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Jig. I, no, go ahead. Oh, Tracks. I, you can go first. I, well, I, I was. I mean, the first, that's sort of a joke, but I I do think it's sort of a funny funny thing to to not cheekily leave in or or i don't know leave it as an option or something that would require a lot more work probably but um uh, actually yeah like the the visualization of not being able to I've had, when the thing's jumping and you're on board um not being able to see what's happening and stuff having to experience that like in audio only inside the hangar is is pretty a little, a little, it's a waste. It's a waste. Yeah. I think the worst thing is that I have to have a Type 9 <laughs> labeled, <Yes>. w- <laughs> labeled, f- labeled fuel hose <laughs> that <laughs> transfers my fuel from my reserve tanks to my tritium depot because there's no other way to do it. Uh yeah, I don't. That's I'm something I wasn't sure. going to come up with as as not being an owner. Yeah, it, it's 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 really annoying to be honest with you. It's really really annoying, yeah. um, and and it just doesn't make sense in my brain. Like like in my mind, I have like this image of like an aircraft carrier. Now, non nuclear, of course. Yeah, there are non nuclear aircraft carriers. There's actually a fair amount of them. But anyway, like this. F-18 sitting on the on the on the deck and them having like this hose run up to the fuel tank and they fill it up. And after it gets filled, they put another hose up to it that runs down into the fuel tank of the ship to actually fill up the fuel tank of the ship. That's effectively what's happening here. And it feels yeah. really weird. And I don't know how the hell they fix it. We're paying the fuel guys millions of credits every week. What the <laughs> fuck are they doing? <laughs> it is, it is asinine. I, it, it, I, I don't know why, if it's just overlooked or what, because I know it was brought up many, many times, but things do get brought up and they kind of just say, oh, oh yeah, we're, we're looking into it. And then nothing ever happened. So I don't know. Yeah, I get, it needs to, you know, become a bug ticket that gets to the top of the list for them to finally fix it. I, I don't know because it is stupid. I, I I get the so 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 my tritium depot person is is Kaya Sergeant or Kaya Sergeant. What the fuck are you doing? Unload this shit right where I don't have to do this. That's the joke I was trying to get pulled up there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> bad delivery. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I think that they need to to. I mean, here's the thing. I got a feeling that this is background uh, coding of the game. That's just a limitation of the engine itself or of the mm. database that they just can't get around for the time being. Tragic. Um, yeah, I know. I'm hoping that this is something they fix or address in Odyssey, or at the very least in a future update. Um, God, I hope I it's know. fixed before then. I do too, but. It feels weird. What what do you think? Hate you're being quiet. I'm I'm a little bothered that we can't bait Thargoids into range of the fleet carriers to use them as as AX firing stations. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I can feel- I, I can understand that though because they are indestructible. You know, that's just kind of. <laughs> Yeah, sleazy kind of. Uh, th- that would feel like an exploit. You know, let's bring enemy to my indestructible battle station. Unless they put a thermal vent port that uh, that uh, the thar- Thargoid the could go can down force and your, blow it up. Yeah, yes. Force it into well, retreat or whatever. Yes. Other than, like that. you know, as a specified event, stations are also invulnerable. And we've done yeah. it to stations. Yeah, but you can't 
bring a station real close to them and do it. I, I don't know. I, I know what you're saying. I, people have done all kinds of crazy shit, and that is awesome when, you know, I've watched that, you know, people bring in Thargoids to stations. But, I don't know, when it's a player-owned asset, it just feels wrong to me. You know, though, that's actually a really good point. It'd be kind of cool to be able to swap out, like, say, the secure warehouse, which to me does nothing. And um, put in like a Thargoid or an or a alien research thing. Hmm. And then that would attract, Thar- like if you're in an area where Thargoids could attack, you know, they would one, notice. You might be, yeah, they would notice and maybe attack your uh, uh, fleet carrier every now and then. I mean, they couldn't really destroy it per se, but what if they could disable systems on it to where you had to, you know, rebuild it somehow? That would be like a whole little small thing that you could do. Maybe if you showed up, you could fight them off, kind of thing. Um, yeah, they could even they even go so far as to like like so the reward for having the Thargoid research thing is that maybe you uncover hearts or something like that every now and then, or maybe you uncover hey here's a here's a weapon that you know will will be really powerful against the Thargoids, but it only lasts twenty minutes or something. You know, like you can one shot. Uh, uh, scouts for 20 minutes or some shit. I don't know. I mean, it only, or, it only lasts 20 blasts or something, you know? Or a cooler running Gauss cannon. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's there's things that they could do there. Well, that, the that other thing goes back I, to what I say about this game all the time. Anything they add to it is great, but anything they add to this is never enough because there's so many, so much more they can do <laughs> all the time. Yeah. 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 That's very true. Well, um, I think we've just about covered it. Y'all have anything else y'all want to cover with, with this? Y'all can think of. Well, I'm curious on your carrier tie. Did you buy every every uh, module or whatever they're called for the thing, yes. or were there some you left off? No, I actually have everything right now. However, there's a ninety percent chance by, that by the end of this week, um, I will not have a uh, black market. Because I don't see, or a secure warehouse. I don't see, I have, I don't understand the reason behind having the secure warehouse. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to, I don't know. Uh, but I don't feel like it's doing anything for me and it's eating up 2 million credits a week that yeah. I could not have. Uh, so it feels like it's a waste. Um, I also, that sounds really kind of weird. I also kind of feel like the universal cartographics thing is a waste, but I'm not necessarily going to take it off. <laughs> it seems You'd like only need it in dis- certain cases, right? Right. Well, I mean, if I ever, I mean, right now I'm turning in all my data wherever the hell uh, hate tells me to send my data. You know, um, so you know, I'm I'm trying to figure out. Well, what's the you know. I'm just. It's just kind of a waste for me to have it on there. It's like 1.8 million a week. I'd be better off just like if I decide to take it actually exploring, which is very possible uh, before the end of the year, I'm actually kicking around the idea of doing an, an actual exploration thing with it and taking it places. But um, if I decide to do that, I'll definitely turn it back on because then it makes perfect sense. But just having it in the bubble and having it on doesn't really make a lot of right. sense. Yeah. And I kind of, right. I kind of feel the same way about the redemption office with it too. And it kind of feels like I'm, I'm, I don't think I'll have it. I think I'll take them off, but I could see them suspending the service. But the black market, I'm there's there, unless I can come up, and I've actually been looking around for for reasons to keep it. I, I've, I've got, got one. Found one. Hmm. Uh, to take care of my OCD, if I have all the modules except <laughs> one, it would drive me nuts. Two million a week, I'll pay for that peace of mind. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's that's why I kind of feel like that. There's something else they could do with that. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it also is also a little bit sad that like you can have all the modules. It would also be kind of cool, and it sounds really kind of weird to me. It'd be kind of cool if you had to like you couldn't have everything. Like you had to give up one or two. Like there's just not enough slots to have everything. You know. Or if there were just different size or different versions of the modules somehow, like, you know, the Starport, you know, there were less ships that your thing could hold with a smaller thing or bigger. You know, I, I don't know. It just, it's so static. You just put all the pieces in and you've got a fully outfitted carrier and it costs this much. There's no, you know, they said it, you know, fully customizable. Well, kind of. I mean, it, it just, yeah. you, you, you just have it all or you 
have different levels of not having it all. It's not like, you know, they said it'll be fully customizable like any of your ships. No, all our ships have so many right. options at every module. So, I mean, there is that. You were saying, hey? For, for the secure trading, uh, corporate governments shut down uh, black markets in uh, stations. So that's one reason you could have that. Hmm. Uh, okay. For the redemption office, yeah, you don't want people to be using that right now. But like, if our guys had bumper purple uh, bounties to turn in, I really don't want those getting turned in in bumper. There's other places they could do that, but your carrier parked at, you know, bumper one or bumper two is going to be really, really convenient for them. Okay, that very makes true. Sense. Now, uh, black market. I mean, overall in the game, you know. I've got, you know, a lot, a lot of hours. Ty's got a lot, a lot of hours. Uh, Hate and Drax, you know, you guys have a lot of hours. How much interacting with black markets have you ever done? (laughs) Only whatever I had to do to unlock that one engineer. Exactly. I I, I think it's 100 or 25 different black markets. I think I got 26 or something. (laughs) Yeah, it, it's it right now. It is just I, I don't know the purpose of the game at all. When I first started playing, I'm like, oh, black market. And I look at every black market, thinking there might be something cool to buy there. And no, I can just sell random shit that I never have. And I, yeah, I, I yeah, don't. And only under point. certain conditions too. A lot of times, it's like it's stuff that would be perfectly legal in other areas and there's nothing particularly lucrative about it. That's, that's the profession, like the whole smuggling and stuff like that. That's the profession that, that deserves a buff because it makes no sense unless it was really lucrative. And, you know, then we could be Han Solo. Maybe. So go ahead. The the one I want to hear because he might have some insight too for BGS stuff. Uh, I'll I'll lead with my BGS part of that then. Uh, When you use a a black market, you negatively affect only the controlling faction's influence and everybody else gets a buff from that. Secondarily, if you were going to buff smuggling, it's not like there's a whole bunch of rare commodities in the game, cough, cough, that a whole bunch of ships, like when you're bounty hunting, could totally drop to increase both combat and smuggling's uh, profits per hour. You know, like uh, USS rare artwork. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, I've actually said for a while now it'd be, it'd be cool if they changed bounty hunting from just straight up murder the guy to destroy his ship. There's an escape pod. If you decide to scoop up the escape pod, you can take it back to the station for a bigger a bigger reward. If not, and you leave yeah. it, then you just get whatever the bounty was worth. You know, and and it would make a kill warrant scanner worth. Uh, you know, actually useful because you yeah. could scan them and find out that they're worth a lot more to, you know, a certain black market, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, some criminals want them or maybe this mm-hmm. particular government wants them and bringing them to those, you know, not just going to any station and turning them in, but you'd find out where they are most yeah. wanted. You know, it would add a, a, a nice layer of uh, depth to the game. Mm-hmm. Well, the kill know, warrant scanner does add like a little bit of money to bounty yeah, hunting, it just, but it, it isn't it, it that just much. It makes it and, more money. Yeah, it's like 50% more or something, isn't it? It's Well, it depends. Get, you can get yeah. bounties from systems that you're not in by knowing if yeah. by using the kill warrant scanner. Got it. And that's a use for the redemption office. <laughs> <laughs> There's uh, that yeah, I, and the dropping stuff too, as as Hate mentioned. I, I've yeah. always thought that it's silly that right now all we can really collect is if you know they drop their cargo, which pretty much everything on that is on my ignore list, and then engineering max. You know they should be dropping random rare goods or black market goods and stuff that we could sell. You know, it, it's also a little weird that if you if you kill someone who's wanted. And you scoop up their cargo is considered stolen. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. He was illegal. I mean, you know, where I work, that's considered seizure. <laughs> well, that's why I have so much shit on my ignore list because I I'm an engineering exactly. mat right. hoarder. I you know I always scoop engineering mats and I don't want to be scooping up stolen shit all the time. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. All right. Anything else, gentlemen? Not I. 
Uh, no, nah, my brain's right. already fried. So, a couple things. Um, I think Chig, was it Chig that wrote down these movie anniversaries? Yeah. All right. So, Psycho on June 16th turned 60. And Blues Brothers on June 20th, which is Saturday, turns 40. And also, and I did not, I wish they had realized this. Uh, on June twentieth, one of my favorite movies of all time turns forty-five. Jaws, mm. love that movie. God, I love that movie. Put Steven yeah, Spielberg on the map. Yeah, there, there's something really interesting about that. Like he worked so hard to get that damn uh, shark to look real and look interesting and to work correctly. And like ninety percent of the time when they were filming, it just didn't work. Like it was broke down, or I think at one point it caught on fire. It, it just was bad, and <laughs> it ended up he had to get creative with shooting because you know he you know this was like, that was like his first movie or one of his first movies, so he had to you know whatever their schedule was they got he had to keep the schedule, so that's where he come up with all of the the camera shots of like just the audio of like the underwater or you just saw the fin or something because he kind of got it in his head. Well, maybe maybe we're better off. What you don't see is scarier. And and yeah. it almost made it a better movie, but that, yeah. that kind of ties into a Psycho too. Remember a Psycho, the shower mm-hmm. scene. You you see the knife go up, and then you see some blood in in the shower. You never see the actual murder. You know mm-hmm. that right. that filmmaking where you you let the people use their imagination. That uh, honestly, I think if they'd have used the uh, animatronic shark the whole time, I think Jaws might have ended up being campy and, and cheesy. Where they instead had us just shit scared of something you can't yeah. see. It was genre defining because of the situation they were forced into. Yeah. And I, honestly, a lot of people say that was the birth of the summer blockbuster, you know, that, yeah. that movie that summer, you know, just took off and made so much money that then every year after that, you know, it was huge summer movies. And let's, let's not forget that with the launch of jaws also launched the uh, mass murder of sharks that don't deserve to be murdered. So Please don't kill sharks. They're good creatures for the most <laughs> yes. part. I love sharks. I just don't go in the ocean. <laughs> I'll, I'll just avoid it. You're missing out, man. But anyway, um, something else with Psycho. And uh, so Hitchcock, that was Hitchcock, wasn't it? Yeah, that yeah, was Hitchcock. He yep. actually, so the part where the woman had to scream while she was in the shower, so they had warm water flowing. He actually cut the warm water right as she was about to scream so the cold water would hit her. And it would shock her more to where he had uh, he would get more realistic reaction from her. That's so. awesome. It's that's cruel, awesome directors but it's do awesome. stuff like that. Well, I mean, that's the same thing that the director uh, in Die Hard did. Uh, Alan Rickman, right at the end, when he's holding on, to, yeah, to the wrist, and then when he lets go, and you know, he falls to his death. He's you know, he's looking up at the camera, and 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 the uh, stunt coordinator said okay we're gonna drop you a three two one drop and instead they dropped him at two or something like that who was actually right. surprised just it's cool when the actors get tricked yeah except for when marky mark had a bomb go off in his face when all, while he was filming uh blah, 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 what was that movie uh the war movie he filmed i know that doesn't narrow it down um <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, Damn it. Lone Survivor? What is that? Lone Survivor. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. The, he apparently, there was a scene there were filming where he had a grenade or I mean, some bomb was supposed to go off like near his face. And like he was supposed to like three, two, one, look away. And then it was supposed to go off. Well, they blew it up like at two. Oh, shit. And then yes. it turned into like this medical thing where like it is. Anyway, it was a bunch of other stuff to it. So it was, uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's, that's our movie trivia. <laughs> Chig. It's cheese time. Already? It came up so fast. Man. Um, this week's cheese is is a is pretty simple one. I was thinking about going like pepper jack cheese, but then I went, nah, I'm just going to go Monterey Jack. A lot consider that the first true American cheese. It's Monterey, California. The beauty of Mon- Monterey Jack cheese is it does mix so well with other cheese like Colby becomes Kojak or Colby Jack can be mixed with cheddar. You get cheddar Jack or you put, you know, peppers and spices into it and you get pepper Jack cheese, just a great cheese, everybody. And instead of saying, you know, uh, stay cheesy, everybody, I'm going to go because this is episode number 42. So long. And thanks for all the fish. 
Ah, oh, damn it. You took my sign off. Don't forget your <laughs> towel. <laughs> yes, don't forget your towel. Uh, man, um, so many feelings about Douglas Adams. And um, that, that, that I think that was my very first sci-fi novel I ever read uh, was uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And it was early for me, too. It was, it was, early. yeah, I definitely read that in my teens, and that's a long, long, long time ago. And yeah, I love was, it. Uh, I even love the movie. The, the movie is, is, yeah, first, first time they, I saw it, I was disappointed because it didn't live up to the hype of the book, you know. But the more times I watch the movie, it's, it's, it's a great movie. I think they did a fine job with it. So. Yes, and Zoe is in it. Yes. So the, the improbability drive. <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> and Alan Rickman. Yeah, Alan Rickman. Oh, yeah. As oh, Marvin, man, Marvin the robot. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. That is two Alan Rickman references in this episode. Yep. <laughs> the late great. Yes. Oh, damn. I hate that he's dead. Oh, Snape well. did it. All right. We're signing off. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you guys next time. Um, I'm not going to say che- stay cheesy. I'll say stay cheesy, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, Get, if you have a fleet carrier and you haven't done it yet, put it around Epsilon Indy, around Midoran Hollow. It's worth it's worth the the tritium to do it. It's really cool. You only got to stay there for about for like two minutes and or three minutes, whatever the cooldown is. It's worth it. It's really cool. Go do it. Um, that's where I am. But by by the end of tonight, I will be back over in Bumber. I think it's Bumber Two. But the, anyway, the big cheese is now in Ross Three Ten. There you go. There you go. All right, and also Baldur's Gate 3. If you haven't watched that video of, of, of I can't think of his name right now, Vink, uh, Larian Studio, Swin, Swin Vink. He's the CEO. He plays, watching him play his video game is amazing because he's really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you, you could tell that, like, there's some bugs. He's like, oh, man, that's a bug. We'll have to get that fixed. And it's just, he's just fun to watch. Um, that's great. Uh, yeah, I that's love it. It's very guys. endearing. <laughs> All right, that's it. Signing off. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Good night.